Luke Caruso of Surfcasters Journal and today I'm going to show you how to powder coat and tie a bucktail. All right, there's no mystery to this it's pretty simple once you see it it's not hard to do. The first thing I'm going to do is I have a toaster oven and I strongly recommend you don't use your wife's, your girlfriend's, your mother's because what happens is the powder coating sometimes drips and you're not going to have a happy camper if you make a mess in their oven or their little uh, toaster oven. So I have a, an older one here that I use and I actually took it and modified it a little so that my rack is way up top here so that I can hang my bucktails. Now the process to do this is you're going to take a bare bucktail and you're going to put it in here and you're going to preheat it for 15 minutes at 350 degrees. So I'll usually put a bunch of them in and I'll get them going. And I'll have them heating for 15 minutes. Now after they've heated up, what I do is I have powder coat, which you can buy on eBay, um, Harbor Freight sells it. There's quite a few places that you can get it. All right, it's just a matter of a very fine powder. Comes in different colors. So what I'll do is, after this has been heating for 15 minutes, I'll take it with a pair of pliers. It's going to be hot. And I'll take it and I'll dip it and swirl it around quick in the powder coat and then bang it off. Now a lot of guys will just take this and hang it up. But the trick to this is putting it back in the toaster oven and letting it cook for another 15 minutes. When you do that, they get hard as a rock. So they're, they're not going to chip on you when you hit, you hit a rock. I've had these actually bend before they chipped, before the paint chipped off of them. I've caved in this lower lip on a rock and the paint was still on there. So it's very, very tough when you do it that way by letting it heat another 15 minutes. And then just take them out and let them cool. Okay, so now we've powder coated them. They've cooled off and we're ready to wrap. So I have a, a, a thread bobbin here that fly ties use. I purposely bought one of the larger ones so that I could put a bigger spool of thread on. As you can see, there's a hump on these jig heads here. Now depending on how much thread you wrap in here, is how much of a flare you're going to get on your hair. If you look at some of the bucktails, they really stick way out. I don't particularly like it that, that far out. I don't think it comes in enough and you don't get a thin enough, enough profile what I'm trying to attain. So this is a matter of taking your thread just wrapping. I'm going to wrap and I'm going to build this up some so I don't have that big flare. Now a lot of folks, some folks do, some folks don't. I like to, at this point, I use the uh, Sally Hansen Hard as Nails. I usually take a beating for that too. Um, and I'll give it a coat. It seals these threads and it also allows the hair to stick to it a little bit better. Because I've had bucktails, I've had good bucktails, I paid a lot of money for that the first bass that hit them, either all the threads pulled off the back or all the hairs pulled out. Okay, so we're going to let that dry for a couple of seconds. And now the biggest thing with this is to not get carried away with the hair. Don't put big clumps on because it won't hold well. You're better off putting two thin layers than putting one thick layer on there. So what I'll do is I'll cut some hair. Now when I cut this hair, I usually take it and strip out 
on the back end. You want to keep this as thin as possible. Any short fibers that are in there. Okay, and then it's a matter of <laughs> putting your hairs on and giving a few wraps. Now you want to, this takes a little bit of a feel because you want to pull it tight, but you don't want to pull it so tight that it does this. Watch, when I pull it tight, it'll start to flare on me and this will be all over the place. Use this thread bobbin. Some folks just use the spool of thread. I like using the bobbin because I can let it go and it hangs while I cut the next batch of hair. Again, the same thing. When I get my deer tails, I try and get northern white tail because they seem to have the longest tails. You have to shop around a little bit um, to find good ones. Usually if you post on the internet, folks will be able to tell you where they're getting theirs. Okay, now I'll take a look, make sure that my hair is pretty even. And it is. When you're cutting, you want to make sure that you if you start in a particular section, you kind of stay in that section because all the hairs are the same length. Because what will happen is if you're not paying attention, sometimes you go to another area, you have hairs that are shorter. So your bucktail's not even on the back end. <laughs> and then it's a matter of tightening this right up. Now what I'll do, I'll take my scissors and I'll trim behind the head. So now, I'll finish this wrap. Come in behind the head there. If I can, I try and keep the contour following an upward motion towards the back and then to finish it it's a matter of a couple of half hitches I usually do three or four or if you're a fly guy you have you already have that whip finishing tool works wonders in a case like this pull it tight Back. And I'll give it two or three coats of the Sally Hansen on top. Stuff really is pretty strong. Give it a good soaking. Now you can make these if you're fishing real shallow water and you want it to sink a little bit slower. You can add more hair and really build this up. If you have very thin profile bait fish, you can actually use less hair and make it a very thin profile. So the good part is you can make these any way you want. You're not at the mercy of the store.